What's up, YouTube fam? Brandon Weaver here once again. Today we're talking identity theft affidavit. We're talking about identity theft, son. We're talking about people stealing, running up in your stuff, in your socials, in your birthdays, and all your names and everything, using your name and putting in credit. Now, let's be clear. There are strangers that can do it to you, and there are family members that can do it to you. Let's talk, let's be real, all right, let's be real. I'm getting emails with individuals who are getting ID theft stuff from grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters, okay? Now, not everybody, not everybody wants to, you know, file a police report and this and that, but if you're getting identity theft stuff, okay, people putting stuff in your name, and you know damn well that this stuff is ID theft, you can go ahead and fill out police report and identity theft victim complaint affidavit. This thing, I'm just gonna be real quick, the FTC stuff, okay? There it is, boom, 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 okay? So it, it's a real thing, okay? You can go to their site and uh, they ask for your law enforcement report as part of it, okay? The department, the state, the report number, filing date, officer's name, signature, badge number, and this, uh, you know, it's got a lot of information, your affidavit. If you do not choose to file this report with law, law enforcement, you may use this form as an identity theft affidavit to provide to each of the companies where the ID theft and misuse was and all that good stuff and it goes on and so forth and so on, okay? So, you don't necessarily have to if it's a family, members and all this nonsense, right? You don't necessarily have to. However, if you can, even if it's a family member, okay, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do any of this stuff. This stuff is educational material. Maybe you're just watching because I get you pumped up and excited for life. Who knows why you're watching it, okay? Who knows why you're watching it? But if it's helping you out, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys out there doing all that. It's wonderful and I'm really loving being able to support you guys and do the videos here. Now, this thing takes about 10 minutes to fill out. And you have the ability to fill it out with and without the law enforcement report. The law enforcement report is stronger. The law enforcement report means you go down to the sheriffs, you go down to your local police station, and you say, look, X, Y, and Z on TransUnion, Equifax, or Experian, okay? Blah, 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 right? This was, this is um, someone else's social, or my social was used to open up these accounts. These are clearly not mine. This is nonsense. I've never lived in Florida. I've never lived here. I don't reside at this residence. Um, this is this is wild. This stuff is clearly uh, ID theft. Okay, you would send this in along with placing a fraud alert on your credit report, viewing your reports after you view your reports for uh, for fraud. Close the accounts that you know or believe that have been tampered with or open fraudulently. Okay, very simple, very easy to follow. Okay, very very easy to follow. All right, so you can send this in FTC. You can send this into the bureaus, okay? This is what's great, is it says right here, you can send this into the companies where the theft and misuse and misinformation is, right? So the bureaus, the collection agencies, the credit card companies, all right? Whatever it is, maybe somebody's got a loan in your name for a car, bam, right there. So that's the stuff that you use if you have been, if you truly have been the victim of identity theft, if you truly have. It is designed for those situations that I've been seeing where people are like, people put stuff in my name. My parents, father, mother, brother, sister. Somebody ran off with my information and now they're charging stuff up and they're doing craziness and they have credit cards in my name. This is what you have. You do have recourse, you do have strength, you do have rights, okay? And you wanna put that freeze, that fraud alert and that freeze on your reports. Many individuals, I believe, have went ahead and frozen a lot of the reports after breaches out there, after Equifax breach. If you know, if you get on the Equifax site and you see, okay, look, my identity was breached, I am now the victim of ID theft. You can, you can, you can, if you see it, you're the victim of ID theft, you believe you're the victim of ID theft, from such a breach, you can fill this stuff out. This is what is powerful for you. So when you see these breaches, I just saw another breach, name, nameless, but a, a little app on the phones had a breach. And I'm like, good thing, you know, I'm not using this and I got no sensitive information, I don't know all that stuff. But if something was there that you know that you need to, you know, fill out a report for, you can go down to the local sheriff or the police station and say, look, I'm the victim of ID theft. This is what's happening on such and such a date. I need a report and send it in so they know they've got the fraud alert on there, okay? Hey, 
stuff that's on there. I need you to know. Yes, I already have the report. I filled it out on January 1st, 2018 or August 1st, 2017 when it first happened, okay? So when stuff arises or if things arise, you're ready to go, all right? So I don't wanna belabor the point too much because you guys understand. You guys have been there. You've seen it, all right? Many of you individuals are going through some not so pleasant stuff when it comes to um, ID theft, and I don't, I don't want you guys to feel uh, bad about it. You know, it's not your fault, and I, I don't, I don't want. I, I like to do more positive stuff because I think ID theft is the most nastiest, hardest thing for someone to go through. It, you feel violated, you know, and and you feel like. You just, somebody took advantage of you. So I don't want you to feel that way. You have power, you have the affidavit. It's maybe, geez, maybe six pages, seven pages. It just depends on your formatting of when you print it out. So it's not long, guys. It's really easy to ask you your information at the time of the fraud, what your legal name was, about you, um, about the fraud documentation, you know, if you have a valid ID, your proof of residency, where you are. So a lot of this stuff can get matched up, all right? And you really are victims of this stuff. You can put in your personal information of what happened, what accounts, uh, if utilities were turned on in your name, if people took out uh, government benefits in your name, if people bringing out IDs, government IDs, all sorts of stuff here for your protection. So. Um, take a look. I was able to find an FTC affidavit identity theft just with a quick search, with a quick Google search. Not, not that challenging. Uh, and you can take the power back and you can get strong and get these negative, uh, nasty identity theft items out of your life and you can be on the road to recovery. All right. So, lighter note, a little bit lighter note. And uh, thanks for, you know, bearing with me here because, you know, ID theft is not that fun. But a little bit lighter note. We have another question. And it is very simple, okay? First round of letters went out about two weeks ago and five items that I disputed have are still removed, that have not have not been removed. As the credit repair agency stated, it's accurate, okay? Two weeks, you send out your first round. We all know here that is some nonsense the bureaus will do, right? We all know they play games and know that it's part of the process, okay? One bureau might say, yeah, it's accurate, verified. You send your next round of letters. You can send letters directly to the collectors. You can file a complaint. One first round in two weeks, just barely scratching the surface. So send that next round of letters. Send the letters that you need, depending on what you have in your situation, you might wanna use, you know, late payment disputes, the goodwill letters, the collection validation letters, the 609s, the freeze in the LexisNexis, Sage Stream and ARS if you have public records, getting stuff off of CoreLogic and LexisNexis, all right? There's a world, a plethora of information out there for you at 609CreditRepair.com, or hey, if you don't wanna do it, we can do it for you at theawesomelifegroup.com, all right? We've got an amazing team. The staff is wonderful. They're doing excellent work. I'm very, very proud of them and what we're accomplishing, okay? So if you need me, you can email me, you can comment below, Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so when you know when all this good content comes out and you know about this kind of stuff. All right, guys? So, until I see you in person, I'll see you on the other side. Take care.